Hi, so I'm, am I saying your name correctly? Yep, hi, how are you? Good, thank you. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go off uh, video while I eat something. Yeah, no problem. Hey, good morning. Hey, I don't know where Brendan and them are. When is he going? He's going to come on Wednesday, I think. Let's see. Hey, Marco. Hey, Barth. Do you know if uh, Brandon flew out for Cloud Native Security Con already? I thought, he, I thought it was Wednesday he was going. Oh, I'm was not sure. Gone? Let me look at his calendar. I don't know who's joining today. It seems like he should be here. I think you can. Are you all going as well? No, no I'm not going. Me neither. So I think, I mean, Jeff is in Seattle, so I think he's going to be going. And uh, Mike is going, so I, I know he's already there. I don't know if anybody else is joining today. I don't know. I mean, doesn't it start on Wednesday, Cloud Day Security Con? Unless there's some other events going on already. See. I'm not sure what date starts. Um, let me ping Brandon. Okay. Yeah, it starts on June 26th. So, I don't know. Hey, Brandon. Can you hear us? Nope. Hello? Yep. Okay. Can you hear you? Hello. Hello. When are you flying out? Wednesday? Tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And I I'll... don't know if what?
Okay, so Jeff's going to join soon, and Mike is already out there, so I'm not sure if he's busy or something. Should we get started? That's good. Okay. Actually, let, right. me, uh, let me get some water, but you guys can start. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jeff. Okay, so I have a few items on the agenda as well as some other. Um, if there's anything else, anybody else wants to discuss? So I'm not hogging the whole meeting. Uh, that's okay also. <laughs> but I have some uh, items from last last week um, and quick topic this morning for... Um, all right, so we can just get started, I think. There's nobody new on the call, so I think we're all good. Um, so, um, for Kona, so this conversation came up, so I'm not sure, if, Brandon, if you know about this, but I think Open Source Summit or something like that, The I think Mike spoke with the open source, uh, uh, you know, like the lead or form from Percona. Percona is like this company that deals with database, like, the, you know, like Postgres, MySQL, and all that other kind of stuff. So they're like experts in the database space. So they, they were like, oh yeah, we could, you know, they, they do a lot of stuff in the open source. So they're like, they were, you know, willing to collaborate on the open source side. So, um, so Ben and I just had a chat with them quickly, uh, just to see where they are, or, you know, in terms of if they, were, if they were interested and all that kind of stuff. So they are, uh, so the outcome for that basically was that they are, um, they do want to, you know, they can offer like, a, a one person, I think like, so they're going to figure out exactly who it is. So they're hi hiring like this uh, open source, uh, I don't know, open source person, which, which, which does, you know, the, the person has technical background in, in terms of Postgres. So they could be the one or a service person, basically, you know, like they're, one of the persons from their service service team could come on board and help us out with, you know, if we want to do some optimization in terms of event or whatever else like Postgres on the Postgres side. So they were, so, you know, that, that could happen in the next, so the, the open source person is joining on July uh, 9th or something like that, July 8th, That's July right. 9th, uh, the open source person is joining and, but you know, if, He's going to talk to see if the service person can join uh, join on board sooner than that, and he can help us with whatever pieces that we want in terms of like, you know, if there's issues if you want to so like you know if you want to make Postgres if there's you know lessons or whatever else like we should be doing Postgres to make it better or whatever else like he can he should be the person to help us with that. Um, so they wanted to do like a you know they wanted like an onboarding thing so maybe like a couple of us could jump on a call with that whoever that person is just to onboard him in terms of Quack like what it is and maybe show him a demo and. And also like, um, and then, yeah, and talk about some of the issues we're facing and then, and see what he can help us with. And on top of that, and then, yeah, they they would be open to, um, you know, they wanted to do like blog open shorts, like blog posts, get their name out there. Like, Hey, we're contributing to Guac, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, that's another thing that they would be very interested in doing on top of that. They had this, and I, I've linked it in the, uh, in the maintainer notes here. They are. They have this open source project called uh, PGT TDE, which is transparent data encryption. I'm not sure if you guys ever heard of this. It's something new to me. I'm not a big. I'm not. I, you know, Postgres or there's something new to me. But basically, but it's like they created this open source project, um, and they were interested in like, hey, if we could, you know, test drive it for them, like you know, try it, try it out, see see how it behaves um, on our side. So this this is again like. 
you know, we scratch, they scratch our back, we scratch theirs kind of thing. So it's like, you can help, they help their open source project out. They help us our, our own open source. So, you know, I just wanted to get, you know, I, there's some articles that I linked in there. Um, the, you know, this is the, like, you know, what it does, right. And then how it's different than data at rest kind of thing. So like, you know, like AWS, I was reading through this, I was reading through this, uh, this blog post, but basically, you know, like AWS has encryption at the data layer, right? So it's going to encrypt like the, at the storage level, but, but it's not doing it at the database. So what TDE is, is provides is that it can do it at the database, specific database level. Uh, he only sees that the limitation currently is, is that it can't uh, encrypt the indexes. So indexes will remain, you know, uh, uh, open, but the rest of the data will be encrypted. But he said, he said in the next release or a couple, of, he's going to, they're working on getting, uh, getting the, uh, the index is also encrypted, but he was mentioning like, yeah, if you can try this out, I was like, yeah, I'll bring it up with the rest of the maintainers to see what, how they feel about this. Uh, and, and, and the other thing was like, I was also, you know, I was also trying to push them to be like, Hey, try guac out also. So that's also going to be another call. So, uh, that's going to happen probably in July, some like July 15th or so July 15th or the 29th. So, uh, you know, so if you guys are, you know, Brendan or whoever else is everyone's free. We can probably join that call and just be like, Hey, this is the benefits you guys. Basically it's going to be like the head of head of platform basically. And the question they're using sneak currently is like, Oh, why, why should we use guac instead kind of thing? So if we can convince them to P, you know, put POC it for us. And that's another, another person that, uh, uh, if that happens, that'd be another person, like another blog post and case study we can do uh, around guac and stuff like that. So any questions? I, I think this is cool and like yeah I think that it's as long as it's like open source so it's like the the uh, I'm assuming data at rest it's I think that should be fine for us to kind of like run it and and kind of say something about it um I would I think it's probably good for us to write down what we want looked at for the Postgres um, database yeah yeah because i if not it's kind of like um yeah like, I, I don't know i don't know what <laughs> but what uh like what are the big problems and at least like point them in the right direction so that that, that they can get started quickly and then we also get um yeah like what I, I, yeah for sure so i think like for example like i don't think we have a good grasp on what the indexes should be at this point, so we haven't done any kind of like, okay, there should be an index that, that's needed to make this query better or whatever else. Like we have no, none of that stuff is really, really there at this point. Um, and I think Ant is going to be new to them. So we'll see how much benefit, like, you know, how much they can help us with the end piece of things, like, it, like how the database gets structured. Are we doing things inefficiently? I don't know, like, uh, like all those kind of things. Well. And then maybe maybe we can ask them some of the questions that we have around the, you know, we were chatting on Friday for the software identifier stuff. And there's things around that in terms of how that should be implemented for the existing database. I don't know. I'm just throwing some ideas out. But yeah, definitely we should like figure out exactly what what it needs to be and then and then go forward from there. I think maybe some of the query limits that, that we had last time also. Um are those solved yet? I know th those were kind of caused by end, right? You mean the that sixty five thousand limit, whatever? Yeah. So that yeah, that's caused by Postgres, but like you have to use paginated queries to solve that, right? So that's that's been solved technically. And those are kind of questions okay. we can ask. Like, okay. is that is that a limitation of Postgres? Is that a limitation of what? Like. <laughs> Like whatever we want to ask, we can ask those kind of questions. But yeah, we should definitely, maybe during the next call or something else, we should definitely like, you know, get to put together a list so like we can make a, you know, a pending, in the pending, I can put down. Um, yeah, let's see. Slash.
Oh, and then yes, and then we should maybe they can also help us with the PGTDE thing, like in terms of implementation of that, how that should be implemented and all that. I don't know how that would work. So uh, I think that's another open topic. But again, like if 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 everybody's on board, we can tell them like, hey, yeah, we, you know, we'll we'll test out PGTDE at least in the open source space. All right. Anything else? Any other questions? All right. So the next topic I had was the uh, deletion of notes. So what I did uh, yesterday, I had some time. So I, I kind of put together a POC and I linked it uh, here, like a diff between the two. Um, Basically, the concept was like starting with the certified vuln, like can we delete old certified vulns basically, right? Um, so it seems fairly straightforward to do it from the inside um, and, and in terms of like, and will automatically delete the edges that are associated with it. There are some things in terms of like if, if it's a many to many relationship uh, where it's not like a single single ID, then you do have to, you have to put this to go. Uh, annotation that says like, you know, cascade delete and it'll take care of it for us and all that kind of stuff. But basically it'll, it'll handle all the deletion cases. So what it does is that's gonna delete the node along with whatever other edges that are going out from it or to uh, to it kind of thing. Um, but not delete, you know, like for example, certify vuln. It won't delete package or vulnerability, obviously. It only delete certify vuln. So this, this will, the thought process here was, I was what I was thinking is like, we could just have it as part of the part of the certifier. So, you know, we currently have a check in the certifier that basically says, um, do, 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 where to go? Uh, we have a check in the certifier that says like, you know, what the difference, you know, if depending on the time, depending on the days that I passed, like we scan to check to see if there's new vulnerabilities, we can just add on to that saying like, hey, if it's been past a couple of days then delete the old one from the database. Um, and then just do it that way. So this, this will automatically delete out the old old certified vuln nodes. So I imagining yeah. like the, 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 the thing that there's a kind of almost like a certifier that runs that, that kind of monitors it. The current certifier will do that, as I'm trying to say. The oh, existing okay. OSC certifier, you just add on to it being like, you know, because it's, it's already getting the certified vulns via the neighbor's party. So we can just right now, right? It's it's checking to see if the you know if the certified bones is not a, it's not you know based on your how much you set it to. It could be like if it's one day old, then recheck it. If it's a couple hours old, then recheck it, kind of thing, right? It's supposed to like recheck every time. So we can just add on to that thing, like hey, if it's you know five days old, then just delete the certified bone node. So that's it's going to automatically delete it. So that's where you're not piling on certified bone nodes unnecessarily in the database. But yeah, I mean, it, it works well. I didn't run into any kind of issues. So I wasn't sure like if you wanted to expand it out. Uh, so you can see in the, in that, uh, in the diff basically, right? It's just, it's another mutation, a delete mutation. You just put add in the node ID and it is, this is going to return you a, a true or not true. I deleted or it errored for whatever reason. And yeah, and we can implement it pretty easily for uh, for ends, yeah, and I just commented everything else out, but like, yeah, you just go to the certify vuln and you just delete it based on the node ID. I don't think you have to make it any more complicated than that, but I wasn't sure if there's anything else, any other gotchas to think about, like, you know, like for example, um, Guidewire was asking about deleting has salsa. Again, we could just delete the has salsa and all the edges associated with it, but the artifact remains. Yeah, uh, I see you expose a um, a delete mutation in the GraphQL. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it, is this, what, why is that necessary if, um, if the deletion- On the client only... side? On the client yeah. side? Yeah. Because the certifier has to call it. 
Oh, right. Okay. Um, but, but that would only be implemented for the certified loan and not for other nodes. It's not currently, but we can. I think the I think we probably want to we specify which nodes. If we want to be choosy, we can be like, hey, salsa can be deleted, and mm -hmm. SVOM can be deleted, and then is um is it going to be as easy to delete other nodes with just a cascade? So if you want to delete edges, yes. Edges are fairly straightforward to delete. If, for example, like has S bomb, we want to go like, hey, go delete all the packages, go delete all the is dependencies like are created by this thing, then it's going to require a little bit more like, you know, some multiple calls will have to mm -hmm. be made because you're deleting multiple things. Mm -hmm. So it all depends. Uh, would they be part of the same transaction? I think that's that's yes. Uh, okay. they can be yes. Yeah, because they if not, be like if you delete a couple of things and then your process dies, then you're stuck with <laughs> like half the thing. Um, yeah, I, I believe they can be part of the same transaction. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's probably important. If not, we get into weird state issues. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that. Yeah, I think like the hardest case is probably maybe has salsa also. Like, do I want to go delete all the build froms? Probably not, because it could be used in other has salsas, right? <laughs> but maybe. Yeah, you know we have the R. Is... Yeah. Yeah, we ran... we talked about this. We ran into to this um in our internal database as well, and. And we kind of decided that, um, like nouns, you generally don't want to delete, um, okay. even if they're, even if the predicates that, like they were referenced from, don't exist anymore. It's because it's difficult to delete them because then it's difficult to maintain referential integrity, and right, right. there's like nothing bad with just like having a noun around. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's not a problem. But what about like is dependency and is occurrence? Should we delete those? From like, for example, if has S bomb gets deleted, mm -hmm. do I want to I go think, delete all the dependencies and occurrences? I think that has S bomb would be the mo the most complex one because that's yeah. um, that's a predicate that references other predicates. Right. So if you, um, especially if you're coming into it from like a, you don't have the node ID, but you have, you have the S bomb. Say so you, you have the like the name of the S bomb, and you want to delete everything yeah. deleted from this, so then you have to go delete. Um, the S bomb node, and then the the has S bomb predicate, and then the is dependency predicates generated from it. Well, that probably the opposite direction. I think you want to delete all the because it has S bomb node. We'll have all the dependencies and occurrences. So you want to delete all the children is dependencies and occurrences first, and then delete the has S bomb last. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd have to look at the order. Um, but yeah, but yeah, you, you have to you have to get rid of all of those. And I don't know if. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if that, if that can be done with like a cascade delete. I don't know how that's implemented, but no, it's like, it's going to be multiple, yeah, you know, multiple calls. But I think it should be doable in one transaction. That should be okay. Yeah, because I do that with batch batch inserts and stuff like that, so I should be able to delete in one multiple things in one transaction. That but yeah, sense. like yeah, I mean, so we could make it, you know. You could have a whatever a REST API. I, I don't know if you want to expose this to be a REST, but whatever it is. But like, yeah, like, you know, you use cases like, yeah, I have this SBOM. I know what the name is, right? It's, it's SBOM URI is this. Now go delete it. So you just pass the URI in. It goes, it queries the database saying like, okay, what is the URI? It gets the ID and then it uses the ID to delete. I mean, I wouldn't I mind. I don't think it's like too bad to make users first find the ID of what they want to delete yeah. and then, then delete that. Exactly. I don't think we complicate it. I don't think we give them like, like, hey, you can put anything in here and we'll go query for yeah. it. I don't think we do that. I think we keep it simple. Let's put an ID in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the most complicated one is has that bomb. Uh, yeah, so has salsa is all, uh, you know, artifacts. So we don't want to delete any of that stuff. Artifacts and Builder, and yeah.
One of the things that I was thinking a little bit about, which is probably like not directly related to the PR, but I think just something to consider is the logging of the deletions. Um, okay. And like, I don't know how much of this would be then again, not to kind of over engineer it, but like, um, like I wanted to find out why a decision was made at some point, um, like for the vulnerability, uh, verification at that point. And I want to maybe go back in time, kind of like rewind the database a little bit. Um, but maybe that's. So, uh, I guess that's a good question. Do we really need to remove edges and nodes or, or do we need to be able to just filter by a, like a timeline, essentially saying, I don't trust any, any facts that are before this time. Uh, I'm, I'm I think the big issue is the, the indexing scaling. I like just a query scaling. It's, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna should be we be doing something like a, what we do with the recore that we're essentially saying before this time, we're going to essentially archive the database and start all over again, uh, like a shard style. Essentially but we still need access to the old stuff, right? I think That's... you still have access to the old stuff, but you don't, you don't have as fast of an access to the old stuff. You're essentially just kind of like separate it as an old generation of stuff. Uh, and then you, uh, you pretty much deal with the newer stuff. Like in theory, that way you can like avoid, uh, the scaling and make like a more amortized sort of like. But when a lot of nodes, oh, sorry to speak over you. Go ahead. No, no go ahead. When a lot of nodes, um, like from day one that your database was created be used just as much um into the future like a... i i wonder uh i my intuition is no there, there should be some temporal and spatial affinity like most data tends to have that property uh i'm trying to think of any that because I, i'm assuming as a new software comes in it will be essentially shadowing older software uh, there may be the odd case of like some Fortran library that like you still need to query information about that I think we can probably handle uh, as a, as the odd case rather than. But I I, I do wonder. I I think it may be worthwhile uh, reflecting on this thing because if it's if we can just abuse that stuff, then there are no techniques to do this. Um, I, I think that's, I think there are two, two problems, right? I think this one on like, um, maybe you can address the temporal query stuff later on. I think some of this is also like, I ingested something bad, like I have to delete it. Um, and therefore we need this. So yeah, I, I think we delete with caution, right? We don't like use at your own risk kind of thing. It's like, hey, you know, if you start deleting stuff and you're losing data, then that's not our problem, right? Because you deleted it. <laughs> so you, yeah, it's um uh, it's kind of like if you're gonna use this and you should understand what's gonna happen then you're, if you're deleting something. So I think it's like a last resort kind of thing. Like, like you said, if bad data for whatever reasons, like, oh, I put this test data in there, right? Then I want, I don't want this affecting my actual query or my output at the end of the day, because it's like, well, this is test data. I don't care about it. So I want to get rid of it now. Yeah, but the question is, is this a priority for V01 or 1.0, sorry. Like, do we want to be able to delete nodes? It's been asked. 
but yeah, I mean, I'm not against the, you know, I'm not saying that we delete everything like Santiago, like, yeah, I think you, like you said, if you can archive things and if it's, if, uh, you know, like S bombs or whatever else, like has S bomb and has salsa, we probably want to archive those. It, things like certified vulnerabilities, maybe we don't want to archive because those are like, I don't know. That could be, that could be a good question for, for Carl, what, what? <laughs> The, the name of the approach rest company is it's like is that a way oh, no? for us yeah yeah is a because this is kind of like a usage versus um um the like how recent was this included and also like if this was used you know it should it should stay in like that the not the non archival right so maybe that can be a separate discussion um, yeah, so like archiving. So. Um, but my thoughts on 1.0 is that I think that deletion can probably be, be experimental because I don't think it's something that we want to at least out of the box support until we file down all the, all the sharp edges because I could see someone using it in a way that would just mess up the database if we so for example, yeah. yeah if we allow you to delete a is dependency note then like someone's gonna go and delete its dependency note and then the has us from there will have a, a missing link. So so as I'm saying maybe we be you know like we prescribe like hey you can only delete has s bomb you can only delete has salsa you can only delete certified bone and like that's it. <laughs> maybe we be be, be be like, hey, you can't delete everything else. You know, we make it very like, because otherwise you're yeah. gonna break yourself. You know, you're gonna run into issues. So we make it prescriptive. This is other things you can delete, and that's it. If there's a use case, like a very good use case, then we can consider it. But I think we start off with like those three or something, or whatever else. If you can think of anything else, but I think that makes sense from. A UX point of view as well because um, these dependencies aren't ingested um, independently of anything else. Like you, you only get right. it from has S bomb, so it's mm -hmm. unlikely or misguided, I would say, to want to delete a single is dependency node. Right. Right. Um, and then to your note about logging, Brandon, I think that makes sense. Um, but I don't know if it's something that like, maybe we need, to, I don't know if it's something we need to support firsthand um, as like a, as another like walk feature. Um, I think if we like add in the ability to just uh, to like add a logger to the, to the delete mutation or something like that, um, that people can set up and, and write logs to, to their, would, to their system. Sorry. Um, uh, would, yeah, go ahead. Would Postgres be able to do that for us? I don't know. Like, is, is that like, you know, does it keep a transaction of things it's done? Yeah, that's yeah, my, my, my other thought is like, if we can defense what the setup is, um you could just roll it roll it back um i think was i was thinking a little bit more simple which is like at least um on the deployment side i'm assuming all this code should ingest the uh, and so we can kind of lock have the logs be um done by the ingester right Like you I mean, have Kubernetes we... logging that, that goes into into some um, logging system. If the mutation is on the client GraphQL, then somebody could just delete something through there. Yeah, it is, it's not done through ingestion, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, it's just GraphQL. Um, I was, yeah, I was... as long as you have logging logging on the the GraphQL, I think that should be good. Which well, another think... thing I was <laughs> a, a crazy idea is that we could create an attestation 
that you we you know we want to do we want to delete this certified vault with this ID with this package in this, and then we store that in the blob store, and then have the ingester parse out that thing and delete whatever the object is that way. So we have yeah. a parser now. We have a record. We have a record in the blob store saying like, I attested that I deleted this thing. Right. That's another way to do it. That's as I was thinking about like, hey, should we do <laughs> should we do that, 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 that a certifier? Weird. So the certifier is not deleting things randomly on its own. It's just, it's the same way. So it's going to be like, oh, instead of creating a certify vuln node at a station, it's going to create a you know, delete certify vuln at a station and that gets stored into an S3 or a blob store. And now, now we have a record of every transaction that happens. Now, now we're not like, it's not hitting like automatically. We're not deleting things. That's another method I was thinking about, which might solve our issue if we want to keep, because I was thinking of the same thing as like, do we want to like a log or like, something happened at this date, so we have a record of that somewhere in our blob store and we can always go find it later. Like, yeah, I got deleted on this day. I, I think like, I, I think that's the ideal situation, but that also assumes that your, your ingestion is like a transaction log, kind of like almost like a sequential, right? So that you can, like, if you were to take all the documents and reprocess it and you process it in the wrong order, then you wouldn't delete it. <laughs> um, so my my thought is like I think that's the ideal world. I think we're a bit far from the ideal world uh, right now, at least architecturally, because we don't have we we don't have it in a time sequence, right? Um, because this thing is dependent. This attestation is dependent on the state of the database. Um, So my thought is just having audit logging is is fine enough. Like I think I'm assuming that all the Kubernetes deployments that run Quark would would already have uh, some plumbing to Fluentd and or Elasticsearch, and as long as someone can like filter and do a little thing on like a deletion was done, I think that should be sufficient. So uh, basically, from our logger, basically. Like just yeah. using our logger, we just have a message saying like, "I deleted this thing." Yeah, hmm. but should should somehow go to Fluentd uh, or is it Fluentd? Oh, hmm. uh, yeah. I I feel like clouds do this. You know? <laughs> clouds do this for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's more of alerting because we don't have echoes on the the APIs now. I think that's something that we want to at least have some some ability to let people monitor. Now, uh, the, the one thing I'm against doing this is we're kind of like going against, you know, the, the structure we have around Guac saying like ingestion is the way, right? The parsers the, and that is the way that modifications happen. If we let the certifier modify things, like that kind of breaks the flow of like, you know, the, the collectors and the certifiers are just collecting information and passing that to the ingester. And the ingester is the one that's going to decide if I, if, you know, how to ingest this or do what if, whatever with the information. That's why I was like, maybe we should go down the route of creating some kind of a predicate for deletion and then ha still have the ingester be the one that does the, any kind of modic any kind of mutation that happens is always going to go to the, ingest the ingester. I think another framing of that is well, if you're having the predicate to do deletion, uh, I don't know whether hmm. it's weird because if you follow kind of like the, and maybe Santiago can chime in on this, but like if you follow the idea of like you should never be able to say that a policy goes from good to bad based on the omission of a predicate does this follow that rule yeah yeah that's a it's an earlier earlier design uh definition right you omit a predicate 
uh, some, yeah, the security decision should be monetized. Uh, but I think that's the that's still okay because essentially you're ensuring that you are adding predicates that change the decision rather than you are removing predicates. Uh, if, if if this makes sense. You're adding, you are adding a predicate that uh, that essentially makes the validation fail rather than you are adding a predicate. I guess you are, if, if you remove that predicate, uh, but then again, it's, I think, I think the particular case is unavoidable in, in this case because you're streaming data from outside. You're not like cutting out at a particular point. I think in that sense we probably need to rearticulate that that design sort of like consideration. I think there are two flows here. So right, I think one of them is a removal of something. Well, not one of them is like this is no longer valid, and the other one is so one of them is a revocation. The other one is like, eh, it's not really important, but the the attestation is still valid, right? Um. Right. So one of them is essentially if you have a collection of evidence and somebody can remove a claim from that piece of evidence and make the verification pass, then then we're in trouble. The other one is uh, you are you are saying I don't trust this piece of evidence anymore by revoking something. Uh, There's like a slight sort of like a, like you can squint on both of them and they, it kind of sounds very similar, uh, but there's a slight, there's a slight difference there. I think, I, I think I would like to review that because I, I think what we're talking about is not necessarily you can remove a piece of evidence or what can we do in order to make this this evidence be like monotonically increasing in a way that you can still authenticate. Uh, yeah. So I'm wondering in this case, is it, is it, I feel like we can maybe just handle the easier case first of this, which is, I want to delete this because I no longer have, it's no longer useful. It's kind of just optimize the optimization thing, right? Which it could be implemented in. Santiago's proposal, like what recall does was archival, it could be implemented by deleting notes, it could be implemented by by it is a a system implementation specific rather than attestation. Um metadata. And then the revocation, revocation case is a little bit more tricky. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we start with the first ones. It's like this data is useless, unnecessary, or test data, and I want to get rid of it. <clears throat> Yeah. And that's that's the use case we're kind of going for right now. And and yeah. And then I think oh, yeah, so I mean, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, uh, yeah, I think as long as it's a specific to tell people like this is not a revocation tool. <laughs> like Right. Yeah. 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 Because at least if we create it as part of an attestation, right? I'm thinking we can we can like it got it, you know who did it also like who authorized it. You could put some information uh, at the busy level or something. It got signed off by this person, and yeah, that, that's why it got deleted. 
bananas. I don't think it has to be that complicated though, because like I I I think the the way I see it is two things, right? I think like the attestations and the metadata that we have that we go through the ingester are about like attestations about your supply chain mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the system, and then these things that we're saying about deletion are attestations about um the state of the database right which don't necessarily affect the state of the world right and so to me those are two separate flows it could be attestation right i'm not i'm not arguing that it shouldn't be attestation uh, but it could also be like a service now integration to someone like authenticated uh like you have like a um this is the subject name of their their their, their certificate for whoever created this um requested this deletion. I think that's implementation specific, so so we don't I don't know whether it makes sense to to have it as like a in total association. And that's um, that's where Intel wants to go as well. So I, I don't know. I would like to I would like to write these down and kind of like over accept them a little bit more. Uh, yeah. Uh, But I guess like to come back full circle, or I think I think this PR makes sense. Um, and we, I think the, I think what we kind of went around is like it makes sense. Um, uh, just shouldn't be used for replication. I think that, and then the 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 flow of auditing and authentication. I think that's still open question. Do we want to talk about that that authentication thing also since we're on this? Which authentication? Basically, like all the things that an API calls. Um, Sorry, come again. Uh, authentication, all the names that. Uh, so, like, who who can call a deletion? Who can call like a certify bat? Um, or like what's the flow? I think I think for everything else we're like, yeah, you have something, you create something. Uh, right now, so the five bat talks directly to the GraphQL API. Uh, I think that one we we said that we kind of wanted to be attestation. Um, but yep. then for this one, it's kind of like uh, what do we expose? Is this like a REST API that then talks to? GraphQL because technically, like architecture wise, the GraphQL should not. It should have a limited access to only the ingester. Okay, so that type of authentication and not the, not like signing and authenticating. Got it. Is there a good mechanism for that? I think like Mihai, I think did the most research on that piece. And he's not here. 
from what I recall from what he said was that there's no free and open source version of it. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this I was like thinking about it. It's like uh, like I know I know you guys are also thinking about doing a proxy in front of like you had the authentication mechanism for your CL the CLI, right? Uh, from the GitHub Actions, the one that mm -hmm. I think Jeff was working on. Yeah. I mean, we can talk about that next time. Let's see. It's more authorization, right? Not authentication, it's more authorization. Uh, I think both. We don't have authentication, sorry, today. All right, so before, like, I guess, what, so what do we think about this delete stuff? Before we uh, end the call, so how do we want to go about it? Is it worthwhile to do? I think my my thoughts is is like uh, it's it's good to do. I think what you and Marco said about limiting it to the the predicate, the so, those specific predicates. Yeah, this is three. Good. Yeah, yeah, and then having the warning sign. Um, How do we want to go about the? Do we want to create attestations or go straight and be able to delete whatever you want to? Kind of like certify bad. Or there's or what do you what do you think? I mean, I don't know, Santiago. Do you want more time on that? Uh, well, I I wonder if this is something that. Because we brought up the like reviewing the, or, or rather, we could also change this behavior when we figure out the the identity part for like the layer iterations. I wonder if for for now this is like sufficient, uh, and then we can. Yeah. My my thought, of, yeah, I, I think I think I can't be my 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 stance on this class, which is like I I feel like it's not clear to me what the story around the attestation is um, yet. Yeah, yeah I mean, but, I'm just thinking that do we want to limit all mutations to the ingester? It doesn't have to be attestation. Maybe some other way, but. Can we somehow limit? So, like, we create something doesn't have to be an. End. Maybe create some other type of document. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be an attestation. That says like yeah, and then a parser for it that does 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 deleting for us. It follows the same pipeline. It puts it into the queue and it deletes it. But we have no way of enforcing that at the moment. Um... So I think that I think that that makes sense in the case, like if we were to have um, authorization on the on all of the GraphQL, but like we don't. Um, so I don't know if it, how how different it is. Um, and I I think this also comes to like how people are using it in production. Um, Like if, if there's a proxy um, over the GraphQL that does that handles the authorization and, and authentication, then like it, it could also I assume it could also handle that like separately for, for the delete mutations. Um, so I don't know if that's a blocker right now. Uh, I think the, the the worry that if I understand it correctly, I think the worry that you have is like. 
people are going to use this API and going to build stuff around it. And then we have no, we, we no longer have a way to say that, oh, and everything should go to the ingester. And then our architecture becomes kind of like a huge mess because like people are using this API in ways that we don't want them to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, like the way we have it currently set up is that all mutation happens via the ingester. And yes, like, you know, like Marco was saying, we don't have a way to enforce it yet, but I think we want to enforce it in the future, right? So that, that's why it's like, if we want to implement something, I think we just, you know, we stick to our guns and be like, you know, yes, all mutations happen via the ingester. We're not going to expose this via the rest. Or, I mean, we can, but it still will, you know, it'll create, create something that will get called into the ingester and the ingester will delete for you kind of thing. I wonder whether it complicates it right now, right? It's. <laughs> but, uh, I wonder whether we can just say we can just say something like, "Do not use this. Do not use this API." Um, um, I I don't think maybe this I don't think the API should be one point Like if we invest in having this these discussions, um, like that the deletion API, not the whole API. Um, yeah. But I think like I feel like you can say like okay look this is an internal use GraphQL API do not call it if you feel like there's a reason you should be calling it please like open the issue and talk to us or I mean or call it at your own risk right I mean you could do whatever you want with your own data right? <laughs> based on the history of computing people do a lot of shit and they get away with. <laughs> And then, I mean, and it, then... it is an open source project, so we're not taking guarantees on like, you know, like, hey, we're going to, like, if you mess it up, mess up your own data, we're not going to be there to fix it for you, right? Yeah. yeah. Brennan, did you say that we shouldn't add this for 1.0, the delete mutation? Uh... I think like the the, the mutation can be that, but I, I wouldn't say it's a stable 1.0 interface because it sounds like we're not, we're not fully done with the story here. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Did tough to know you, I like, I like that. Yeah, I think that's that's a, a motivation to get the one point right? I think I think when we say one point we say like use these things, don't use these things, um, unless you really have a use case too, and then they should they should come talk to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, another one for 1.0 is the C sub also. <laughs> Which aspect of it? <laughs> well, the registering part. I mean, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't scale, right? Yeah, it doesn't scale. <laughs> I mean, it, it gets filled up. It, there's no deletion. I know, I know we, we can talk about it more in detail, but like we were thinking about this is like maybe gRPC is okay for open source, but like if you want to use it in production, then you use a different mechanism. <laughs> and then we provide like uh, hooks into the whatever the other mechanism, mechanism is, whether it's SNS or, you know, all that kind of stuff. I guess the question for 1.0 is like, is is GraphQL stability versus the um, deployment stability, right? I, I, which one are we? Yeah, I agree. I that, yeah.
Like, if we can fit any changes that we want to make the C sub into a single container, then that's fine. Well, I mean, if it doesn't require a user to delete their database and start over, then it's fine to do after 1.0. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It shouldn't. <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, C sub is like, I guess you make it some missing data, right? If you're not fully caught up. I mean, I think a realistic solution is going to involve, you know, you might miss some data. Like, yeah. So. Okay, well, I think we need a, for next time, I think we should create an issue like 1.0, like roadmap to 1.0 and one of the open things we need to tackle. And if we can get community help for, for those pieces and all that kind of stuff, we should do it. I think it's hard to get development stability at, at where we are. This seems a bit tough. All right, I think we're over time, so. Um, yeah, is your PR ready for us to to? Oh no, no. It's, uh, I'll make sure it's. Let's, let me see if I have to make any other changes. But um, I put the test in for certified bones, but I haven't done the other two. So I might just yeah, I'll, I'll clean up this PR and then maybe create another one for the other two. Or has salsa and uh, has us bomb. All right. All right. Talk to you guys Thanks. later. Bye. See you.